Time for the only radio show of its kind. Auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, veterans of vintage. It's the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. For the next hour, enjoy great information about buying and selling antiques and collectibles and some interesting stories. Now, the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Welcome to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Thank you for joining us. We are here every Saturday from 1 to 2 o'clock. I'm Susan. I'm here with Randy Donnelly. We are the owners of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois, just 60 miles west of Chicago. And we're here today to help you determine if you have any valuable items at home that you might want to sell at auction. Good afternoon, Randy Donnelly. Hey, Susan. Can you believe it's December? No. I can't believe it's December. I don't know what happened. Yeah. We have a lot of exciting things coming up, though, in December and next year. Yeah. Well, Christmas is coming up, so Uh. think about auctions to buy your next Christmas (laughs) gift. That's right. Come on out to do some Christmas shopping at our December 16th firearms (laughs) auction. There you (laughs) go. What a great gift. (laughs) Firearms and ammo is what you need to buy for Christmas It's on my list. I got to tell you, it's on my list. (laughs) So. How are you? I'm good. What are we talking about today? Well, Susan, I wanted to ask you if you believe in coincidences. Of course I do. Yes. That's how I met you. (laughs) That it is. (laughs) Um, But, you know, uh, Susan, you obviously were were just watching this movie. Um, Which movie? uh, With women baseball players. Oh, A League of Our Own. I was just watching it the other night. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, Susan is watching this this movie, A League of Their Own. um, And, uh, you know, I'm just in and out of the the room. But I, I knew you were watching it. And... Not a week later, not, uh, uh, you know, any, the very next day, a gentleman walks in and he starts telling me about all this baseball memorabilia that he has, that his aunt used to play in this female league during World War II, and he <laughs> has her uniform, and he's got baseballs and and all this great memorabilia from his aunt, and so... I mean, I'm I'm in disbelief. You know, anybody can say anything. So the very next day, uh, he said, I don't think you believed me. So I want to bring some of this over and show you. And he's got all this great, he's got her mitts, he's got uniforms. Uh, I mean, all this incredible oh baseball memorabilia. It's one of my favorite movies. It came out in 1992. It was directed by no other than Penny Marshall. Uh, I, I love know, Penny we Marshall's love Penny work. Marshall. Yeah. But the actual league, it's a, it's a fictional story, the movie is, but it's historically accurate. About the plot is uh-huh. historically accurate. And, you know, all the men who were off in World War II. Fighting the war. Fighting yeah. the war. Um, missed out on, you know, our favorite sport, baseball. So Philip Wrigley of the Wrigley Empire formed a women's league. Get out of here. I had no idea Wrigley was Wrigley involved Wrigley did that. In that. 1943. Wow. It was called the AAGPBL. Try to say that fast. The <laughs> All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. Wow. Yeah, you know the name of the team that, that played in the movie? No, I don't. I'll tell you. It was the Rockford Peaches. I'll be darned. Wow. Yeah, isn't that great? So this woman's uniform that you... That we might get. Was she on that team or a different team? No, she she was in a, a, a different state, I think actually. in Wisconsin, probably. Yes, was in Kenosha. Kenosha. I think they were the Kenosha Comets at the time. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know. But, but she tried out. I know she tried out in, in Chicago. Yeah, thousands. 2,000 yeah. women tried out for parts in that movie. I'll be darned. They all had to play baseball. You know, well, there were no really stunt doubles it, in the movie Here's what's at interesting all. is this gentleman uh, uh, was telling me that. There, there were only sixty women in 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 this league. Did he mean on her team? I mean, he's he's saying there's only sixty of them. Could that be? Oh, that could be. Yes, they only had like four original teams, and then they've expanded over five years, and then they had like tons of fans, and it just exploded after that. So, what year so, did it actually get started? Nineteen forty-three. Forty-three. So, 19- right in the middle of the war. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, the original women's league, um, all of them had to wear skirts. On and off the field. Imagine Get that. That would never here. fly today. Wow. Let me tell you. And they all had to go to a charm school. Charm school? A no. charm school. <laughs> charm school to play baseball. A, Come yes, on. exactly. And they got nicknamed the Lipstick Lipstick League. Boy, you're having a trouble talking today. I'm having a hard time today. Grab your December, coffee. yeah. You got me all flustered with Christmas coming up. Um, but it paved the way for 
women, the movie did, for women being cast in action roles, which was a good thing. So it is one of my favorite movies. It's based on a true story. Um, all the cast had to actually play baseball, except for Gina Davis. She got uh, cast in the movie just by throwing the ball to Penny Marshall. She's like, you're in. Wow. But my favorite part of the whole story about the movie was Demi Moore was originally cast as Dottie, the catcher, yeah. okay. which is Gina Davis, right? Oh, wow. But at the last second, she got pregnant. So oh, she couldn't be in it. Get so out of here. Bruce okay. Willis literally screwed her out of that role, Randy. <laughs> hey, I don't know if that's going to make the air, Susan. <laughs> I can't believe you just And it was the highest grossing that. baseball film of all time. <laughs> so I really, really hope that the uniforms uh-huh. and some other... Um, Baseball memorabilia from that time frame would come our way. I would love to see it. Well, it, it certainly looks, I mean, it looks very promising that we're going to get this this uniform. And, uh, I mean, we are planning a, uh, a big sports auction right now. And that's, I mean, this is a long way to tell you folks that we're looking for uh, sports memorabilia. I mean, With we've, provenance we, we, we've mentioned mm-hmm. it in, in some of our last... Uh, uh, show us, you know, that, uh, yes, this is taking place. But but now we've got some really good uh, highlight items already in. And, uh, you know. Yeah, lot, I can't wait for that. That's going to be a fun one. We're also going to have on our show today, Ryan Boyle, who's uh, sure, one yeah. of our sports memorabilia experts. He's going to talk about some of the items we currently have mm-hmm. ready for auction. You know, a couple of things uh, I wanted to talk to you about with this particular auction is a uh, a gentleman from Westchester, uh, brought in a, a original autographed picture of Babe Ruth, the great Bambino. I saw that. And um, oh, Babe Ruth autographs and all of his memorabilia go for staggering, staggering prices. Now, we we have an original uh, a photograph of Babe Ruth autographed. And again, coincidences, you and I just walked into the museum the other day and looked in our toy shop at the Wild West Town, mm-hmm. and what did you find? A, an autographed baseball. Um, oh, I did, of, yes. I saw that <laughs> sit in the corner of one of the shops. I go, uh, is that real? It, and you said, it absolutely is. In, in our in our toy shop, uh, you know, display, mm-hmm. at the, at the, there's a, a Babe Ruth baseball um, in, in a mitt, didn't go with it. That's and everything. come out but of that, there. That's been on display for years, so... Uh, what I'd like to do, though, uh, and we'll talk to Ryan about this later, um, I'd like to get this baseball, um, you know, get the provenance uh, done where, the, the, you know, somebody grades it. Mm-hmm. And, Good idea. You know, w- we need a COA w- with this baseball, you know, to make sure because, I mean, that, that so makes how, all the difference in price. How is that done? If somebody does have something like that, what's the best route they should go to consign it at auction? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that, so that'll be a question for uh, Ryan. Okay, I, good. I, we're going to have him on in, in the next segment. But uh, uh, right now, I just wanted to point out, uh, again, to all our listeners, yeah, I mean, the value. And the reason we're bringing this up, folks, is because, I mean, everybody knows that good old baseball cards have value and, and everything because you've heard about the highlight cards, the Honus Wagner cards and, and uh, the, the Babe Ruth rookie card, uh, the 1914 Babe Ruth rookie card sold for twelve and a half million dollars. Are you kidding? Dollars. Yeah. So we're oh talking gosh. about staggering numbers here that you could have in a, in a little uh, cigar box in your dresser drawer and, and not even understand the prices. That's, the purpose of this show is always to get you to stop and think about what you could have. Um, you know. Wow, what about that signature on that baseball? Well, you know, baseballs, uh, they're all over the board with uh, Babe Ruth baseballs. I guess it's a, it's a matter of where he signed it and, and everything else. But they go anywhere from 16000 on up to $140,000 wow. uh, Babe Ruth uh, baseballs have gone for. And... A Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig double signature once sold for $400,000. Amazing. So, uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, oh, here's another staggering fact. A bat, uh, one of uh, Babe Ruth's bats sold for $1.85 million. <laughs> So, so people, get in your garages, in your basements, your attics. Let's see if we can find some Babe Ruth memorabilia for our next auction. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, of course, it's not just Babe Ruth. I, I, I know. Mean, and any of the major uh, major stars. Uh, a, a Mickey Mantle all-star bat uh, sold for 384000 I, I mean, 
Uh, I mean, that's way more recent than, uh, than you know, Babe Ruth memorabilia. Everybody knows about that. Well, you know, if you do have anything like that, here's what you need to do first. Email us immediately at consign at donleyauctions.com. That's D-O-N-L-E-Y auctions with an S dot com. Send us some photos. Where are you located? Gosh, if you got something really good like that, I'll come out there myself and pick it up. Oh, I'm sure you would. <laughs> I definitely will. Or you can always call us at 815-923-7000. We can put you in touch directly with Ryan, our sports memorabilia expert, and he can talk to you about next steps. So don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to have Ryan coming up. I have some questions, too. I'm going to ask him about some Cubs memorabilia. I was asked about this last night when I was out dancing by my friend Connie. She's got some Cubs stuff. So we'll ask Ryan about that. And don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to the Donley Auction Tower right here on AM560, The Answer. They've been called auctioneers of antiques, collectors of cool, even veterans of vintage. And they can introduce themselves. Thanks for listening. This is the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. I'm Susan. I'm co-owner of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois. Folks, we're just 60 miles west of Chicago. And today we're talking about sports, baseball in particular. And we have Ryan Boyle, our sports memorabilia expert, on the line with us today. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for joining the show. Hi, Susan. Thank you so much. We have questions for you today. Go ahead, Randy. Let's grill him. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to grill you all right, Bill. Um, I love sports. I I just have so many questions about it. You know, right right now, let's let's jump into baseball since that's kind of what we were talking about in the last segment. But I'm aware that the, the auction we're putting together is for sports memorabilia, and we don't want people out there thinking we're only after baseball. Right, it's I all mean, sports. Yeah, we're looking for hockey, for, you know, just uh, anything and everything. Football, of course. Uh, uh, we, we have a NASCAR. friend who's really, really looking for good original uh, Bears items. We've we've got such a demand right now for uh, original good stuff in in Bears memorabilia. Uh, somebody's putting together a, a Bears museum right now, and they've been buying feverishly from us. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure I can yeah. even comment on that right now. Okay, but uh, <laughs> not with that record. Uh, but uh, Ryan, uh, tell us kind of some of the stuff we've got in house right now. Well, right now we we have a really nice collection. We have a lot of um, older baseball cards. Um, It's kind of interesting, an interesting story. Um, One day Mike says, hey, we we, we did a pickup last night. Come take a look at these cards. And so I start looking through them, and I I, I pulled a a 53 uh, Mickey Mantle, uh, 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 Yogi Berra rookie. Jackie Robinsons, uh, Ted Williams, just really, really good stuff that, um, you know, people are always looking for. Um, you guys had mentioned the Babe Ruth autograph photo, which is definitely um, uh, definitely a highlight. Um, we also have a, um, a, a framed, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it, it's four pictures of um, and four autographs of the six members of the 1920s uh, Yankees murderers row, which they were. Oh, yes. Wow. It's a great photo. Are Love there it. any autographs on that? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Gehrig, I think Ruth is on there. Um, and I, I forgot the other two that are on there right now, but um, it's okay. four of the six and they are, um, you know, even though I think that they were, you know, the mid to late twenties, uh, you mentioned Murderer's Row today, and, you know, a lot of people still know exactly what they're Yeah, a lot doing. of people, though, think it's uh, the gangsters, you know, so I don't know. Hey, uh, <laughs> real quick, one, one thing I w- wanted to, to mention, though, is sometimes, uh, you know, I once had a, a collection of baseball cards um, handed to me for uh, for sale. And I, I couldn't believe the cards I'm going through, the early uh, baseball cards and everything. But oddly, um, they didn't bring a lot of money. And I was, oh, I was so disappointed and shocked. But it all has to do with condition, condition, condition. And what 
looks to a novice as a good condition card because the color might be nice and everything. Uh, a collector uh, looks at the edges and, and you know, the rounded corners and, and, and things like that. And, uh, again, grading cards is really important if you want the big money out of that. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. As, um, like what you just said, condition, condition, condition. Um, and people will always pay up for the best. Um, when you have more common stuff, which, you know, it is said, but, you know, if you have a lower grade Mickey Mantle, uh, you know, it's, you know, a couple thousand. Whereas if you go up to the higher grade, well, uh, I think if it's a, a Mantle rookie just, well, I think last year sold for $12.6 million. Um, so- and there was obviously an and I, I believe it was a 9.5 out of a 10. So the right. baseball cars like my brother and I had where they put them in, we, we put them in the spokes of our, our wheels uh, on our bicycles back in the day so that they could be noisemakers. Those cars probably aren't going to bring much money. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, exactly, exactly. I mean, they, they, you'd be surprised. I mean, they still certainly have some value, but um, the more damage it's done, the less of a collector base that you would be able to market it to. Hmm. I just want to back up real quick about Murderer's Row because it's one of my favorite pieces in the display case over by my desk. I looked it up, Ryan, and it was from the 1920s New York Yankees team, right? And the six hitters on the team were Earl Combs, Mark Koenig, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Bob Muso, and Tony Lazari. So which autographs were on that photo? Uh, if memory serves me correctly, I believe it was Ruth. Gehrig, uh, Lazari, and I, I want to say it was um, Koenig, but I would have to go double-check just to make sure. Okay, that's a great a great but piece. I, you know, I, Susan. I know that Dave and Lou Gehrig are definitely For sure, yes. You know, uh, Gehrig and uh, Ruth were such big celebrities back in their day that they actually recorded phonograph records on 78 RPM records. Oh, really? I've, I've had many of them because, you know, obviously we're antique phonograph collectors. And uh, uh, it's just amazing how much memorabilia there is out there on uh, Gehrig and Ruth. So uh, it, it, there's a good chance, I bring that up because there's a good chance you have these items at home and you just need to call us, right? Where That's at, right. Susan? Call us at 815-923-7000, or you can email us at consign, C-O-N-S-I-G-N, at donleyauctions.com. Photos would be great. Just give us an idea of what you have, where you're located, and we'll put you in touch with the right person to set up the next steps. Now, Ryan, um, as we're talking about this, there's also plenty of merchandise that people shouldn't bother calling us with i mean a, a lot of right. these these cards were made so plentiful in the in the uh, uh, 90s and 2000s yeah, or production. even in the yeah. 80s uh why don't you uh, tell our, our our listeners kind of what what we're not looking for because we don't want to waste their time and or get them disappointed hey you know we called you we you know email you and all you tell us is no 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 uh you know, I don't mind doing that, but I don't want people getting upset with us. So t- tell our listeners some of the things we might not be looking for. Well, it, 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 you hit the nail right on the head. Um, and it, it's hard to say all the, the newer stuff, but the majority of the, you know, the 90s, 2000s, uh, on up, like you said, they just printed so much of this stuff and there's just so much of it still around. That um, and there are a couple, um, you know, uh, exceptions. But generally, what what my wish list would be would be stuff pre seventies, um, you know, the fifties, the sixties, uh, on back, um, you know, the Lou Gehrig, the Mantle, um, th- that type of stuff is the stuff that we're really looking for. But um, the more modern, it, you know, like the two thousand top sets. Uh, you know, they're commonly bought and sold for, you know, in a $20 area for the whole entire set. Well, you know, um, Ryan, bringing that up, I, I was at an auction recently, not ours, by the way. I was at an auction recently, and I saw a pallet 
a pallet of baseball and, and trading cards. There might have been football there also. I'm not sure. But, again, vintage was was not correct. They started the bidding at 500 no no bids, 300 no bids, 200 no bids. $100 uh, got an opening bid, and I didn't bid 110 I had no interest in buying these because, to me, it was just big, heavy stuff. And uh, it, it ended up this whole pallet full went for $100. Wow. Did you know that Topps, yeah. the Topps company, their highest producing product is not baseball cards? You know no, what it is? It's I have no idea. Bazooka baseball gu- base, uh, bazooka gum. Really? They yes. own bazooka? <laughs> I talk today. Bazooka Joe. Yeah. Yeah, right. Anyway, that was just a little trivia for you today. Ryan, I just had a quick question. Um, Cubs memorabilia. Anything there we should be looking at? You got a few seconds here. Um, well, certainly Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks, uh, Ron, okay. You no, know, on back. Um, when you get into more modern stuff, it's kind of hit or miss. Okay, um, good to know. Ernie Banks' Shelby Mustang has been uh, tossed around the uh, oh. the antique car He's world. Got one. It, it's sold a couple times for huge money, of course. Of course. You know. Well, Ryan, thank you for joining the show. We'll see you back at the office again. Call us at 815 923 7000 if you have any questions for Ryan. Coming up next, we're going to talk about some upcoming auctions. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour right here every single Saturday at 1 o'clock on AM 560, The Answer. You're listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM 560, The Answer. Welcome back to the Donnelly Auctions Hour. I'm Susan this is Randy with Donley Auctions in Union, it Illinois. Is. And you know what? I said goodbye to Ryan too early. Ryan, don't go anywhere. I still have questions for you. <laughs> right. Are you still there? Yes, yes, absolutely. Ryan, we wanted to talk about uh, grading of baseball cards and right, certificates we... of authenticity. So I wanted to get some more information on that before you go. Yeah, my, my, my question to you, uh, Ryan, would be um, if, if folks out there wanted to get just some things graded, how do they go about that? Is the easiest well, way to contact us? I mean, can you walk them through the process? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to, um, you know, either walk them through or advise them. Or, um, you know, I could probably send them off and handle the process ourselves. Well, um, yeah, like like the, the Mickey Mantle uh, rookie card that we have. Is that something that we're going to have graded? Or is that something that is, you know, good enough it's going to sell for what it sells for with, without grading it? Unfortunately, that one is not in it, – it's in good shape, but it's not, you know, I wouldn't say it's a 7, 8, or 9. So I would just – at that point, I don't think – because it costs a couple hundred dollars. It depends on who you send it in or what name we're – Sure. We're, okay. Well, and a lot of these cards, uh, the the important thing is huge money is made when it's the difference between an eight and a nine. Um, yep. I mean, we we're talking sometimes, depending on the card, tens of thousands of dollars difference on that one grading point. So, so we would always uh, tell people when it's important to spend the money to uh, to grade their cards, but you know. Uh, beyond cards, I mean, we're looking for everything for this sports auction, right? I mean, uniforms, helmets, uh, footballs, hockey sticks, eh? anything sports uh, memorabilia. Yep. It, yeah, exactly. Uh, all, all the major uh, sports. Um, we're just basically, we're hoping to get the highlights of each one. But, yeah, no, certainly, um, you know, I, I know hockey, I know basketball, I know football, and uh I, I absolutely love baseball. That's kind of I'm one of the rare breeds that actually prefers baseball over football today. Wow. Most of my friends. What kind of action. provenance are we looking for with these items? Uh, certificate of authenticity, or just a type sheet of paper that says this was my grandpa's? How does that work, Ryan? Well, well, generally in the sports world, the the number one uh, authenticator is PSA. Um, they're the most widely accepted. Um, we're, if they say it's a, if they say it's an eight, no one's going to most likely argue with you that it's an eight. Um, and then they also, you know, grade or authenticate autographs, the, the whole gamut. Um, and it gets technical too, because then you can, it depends on how well you want to grade it. They can authenticate the signature. 
and then they can authenticate that they would essentially grade the signature too, which sometimes, you know, true collectors really want both the, the best of the best. So, well, um, I'm, I'm glad you brought up, you know, the, the idea of COAs because COAs don't always mean what we would like it to mean. I mean, um, uh, people always have to go online and look up the reviews of who did a COA because COAs can be faked just as easy as the autographs themselves. So COAs don't always mean anything. So your your favorites, uh, Ryan, are who? Uh, PSA is definitely number one. And I would say number two in my eyes would be um, um, Beckett and or SGA. Um, they're up there too. But like what you said, there's so many – um, you know, authenticators out there and, uh, you know, there's, there's just no quality control for a lot of them. And, you know, it, it, it's not as widely as accepted as PSA. You know, so you, I, w- I don't mean to cut you off there, but or years ago, I, I got to go into one of my stories, of course. <laughs> um, years ago, I had the opportunity to uh, go to Eddie Belfort's house uh, out in Texas. Uh, he was Eddie the Eagle, one of the best all-time hockey players uh, uh, ever uh, on earth, played with Chicago for years. And um, he had a whole collection of uh, sports memorabilia that he uh, was thinking of selling. And, I mean, there were 300 hockey sticks. He had his his helmets with the wings on the back and, and everything. It was just absolutely incredible, the treasure trove uh, that he had. And in, in that particular case, the COA simply would have been me uh, – taking pictures of this right, stuff with Eddie the owners at, at his house. Items, it doesn't right. get any better. Uh, and um, the in- incredible, incredible collection he had. But um, uh, but we did not end up with that. Um, he was able to sell it uh, privately to one one sports company that uh, mm-hmm. bought it all and uh, was okay, selling it So we're it looking off. for some more great stuff. You heard what Ryan had to say, folks. Look for Ernie Banks. Let's find some Ernie Banks and Babe Ruth items, that's for sure. There's so much and out have, here in the Chicago and Randy, area. Randy, we love your stories. I think we should change the name of the show to the Randy Donnelly <laughs> yeah, Story okay, Hour. Okay. How about that? Uh-huh. <laughs> but thank you again, Ryan. We'll let you go back to the office this time. But don't go anywhere, folks. So we're going to talk about I'm so excited. We have so many auctions coming up that we got to let everybody know because I know you guys don't listen to us every single week. So those of you who are just oh, joining I in, I, I'm on. hoping they do. So those of us... Those of you just joining us, I want to fill you in on what is happening at Donley Auctions in December and January. So much great stuff coming up. Randy's going to tell some more stories. And we're going to have a quiz next week. So uh... <laughs> so join us after the break. We'll talk more about Donley Auctions auctions. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour every Saturday at 1 o'clock on AM 560. The Answer. And now, more of the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. We are back with the Donnelly Auctions Hour. Thank you for joining us during that little break. I'm Susan. I'm co-owner of Donnelly Auctions here with my wonderful partner, Randy Donnelly. We're owners of Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois. We're not that far away, just 60 miles west of Chicago, straight down 90. You guys should come out and visit us sometime. But in this segment, Randy, I know we talked about sports memorabilia so far in the show, but I want to switch gears a little bit because I'm very excited about our next auction coming up in December, firearms and ammunition. And then in January, military and some more antiques and cars. So we just have a lot to inform you about. Right. Uh, You go ahead. You can start with the, uh, the, the gun auction if you want. Otherwise I'm going to jump into January. Oh, let's talk about firearms and ammunition because it's right before Christmas. It's December 16th. We have 600 firearms in one day. So we cut it off at 600 because we're going to be there all day. And then on Sunday, December 17th, we have thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition, gun accessories, cleaning kits, and reloading gear. Oh, my gosh. All the other stuff. And there's fishing gear and fishing poles. Taxidermy. Sportsman gear. The taxidermy, too. So. That Sunday will be everything else. Guns on Saturday, everything else on Sunday. Okay, so it'll all be online. Uh, it's online you now. You can go now, yeah. Yeah, so where do you go? Donleyauctions.com. We have a little image there that shows all the firearms and everything. Click on the, the photo or the button. It'll take you to our online catalog. You can register to bid there. 
You can place bids there, or you can even call us to place absentee bids if you if you want. Or, or a come, phone live. Bid. come uh, live. Just come on out. We got yeah. pizza. We want to meet beer. you. Yeah. You know, especially if you want to handle the firearms, bring your FOID card with you, because uh, we do have very strict rules when it comes to handling our firearms. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll have our, f- our firearms experts on site as well at the auction. So and you Susan can ask and I are there. Come on out and meet us. We uh, we love meeting all of our listeners. It's it's always You're a lot going of fun. Gr- Christmas shopping anyway. You might as well come out to Union. Yes, you may. That's right. Yeah. So that's coming up in December. But we had so many great items just flooding in the door. You know, we're always looking for firearms, and we want to promote this auction that we had to push off the military portion of the auction to January 6th. Tell us a little bit about that, Randy. Well, yeah, the the military collection is always a highlight. You know, so many people collecting uh, uh, military relics, helmets. Uh, We've got American helmets, German helmets, Japanese, uh, daggers. Uh, You name it, it's there. There's just so much memorabilia that we couldn't fit it all in to our our regular gun auction, which is normally what we do, but we we have a standalone. So, again, if you've got items to consign yet, there's a little time for you because because we pushed military off a little bit. Right. And we're hard, heavily, heavily looking for a paratrooper, World War II American paratrooper groupings right now. If you had any relatives that were were paratroopers, 82nd Airborne, anything like this, um, we need your memorabilia. Again, selling for huge money, now's Mm -hmm. the time to sell. Definitely. And to do that, to consign with us, send us an email. That's the first thing we always ask, because we need to know what you have and where you're located. Consign at DonleyAuctions.com. Send us some photos. I'll put you in touch with Randy or David or one of our other military experts to walk you through the next steps. Or you can call us at 815-923-7000. Just to recap, this auction, the military auction, is Saturday, January 6th. So mark your calendars. All right. You know, Susan, I, I know you're wanting to talk about auctions right now, you know, but uh, uh, we... You want to talk about what happened yesterday, don't you? I do, you know. <laughs> I know. It was so exciting. Be, it was because great. we ask you <laughs> I wonder why it took you so folks, long to jump on that one. <laughs> we ask you folks, um, you know, what we're looking for. And when it walks in the door, it's, it's always so exciting. Um, we actually had a, um, a gentleman come to us... Uh, uh, all the way, didn't he come all the way from New York? Yeah, they came from New York. Uh, and brought us... The whole crew. A a training aircraft. A uh, uh, It has a five-foot wingspan. So, it, I mean, this is not full size, but it's from 1915. Right. From 1915 when the, uh, the, the chief uh, pilot uh, here from the 1st Aero Squadron of Volunteers of the United States taught people how to fly aircraft. We have the training plane. Oh, it's, it's magnificent. so absolutely incredible. Um, and um, this this piece was, was actually made in 1911. And by 1919, it was already sitting in a museum. Oh, wow. Uh, it's that. so historic. Mm-hmm. But as museums sometimes do, I mean, they change displays and so on. And back in the 60s, this got sold off. Uh, out of display and into private hands, and now it's being auctioned in our future aviation auction. So I asked you on our last show, if you've got any aviation items, we need them. And I'm talking engines. We'll take posters, uh, parts of airplanes, Mm -hmm. uniforms, or early flying helmets, goggles, any of this, or even airline stuff. Uh, If your uh, family had a a pilot in, in the family and have any any uh, travel posters and things like this, all selling well. And it's all going to be in our aviation auction what, coming up. What I loved about that little visit the other day was this guy came with four or five of his friends. They all came in with, like, white gloves. They did. And their little brushes, dusting mm-hmm. it off and putting the wings back on. And we were videotaping the conversations with everybody and getting the entire story all on tape and video. I yeah, the owner is in his it. 80s. I mean, so he, he <laughs> said, so he said, it's time. I need to get yes. this into new hands. They spent hours with this yesterday. 
So yep. you never know what comes in the door at Donley Auctions. You know, we start, have to start manifesting the stuff again like we did with the League of Our Own. And I'm going to watch the movie Patton and hope for some <laughs> great military relics. <laughs> yeah, because we need more tanks and cannons, that's that for sure. That we do, that we do. You know <laughs> All me. right, we got more information coming up next. Don't go anywhere, folks. You're listening to the Donley Auctions Hour here every Saturday with us at, from the Donley Auctions Company and Union on AM560, The Answer. The Donnelly Auctions Hour continues now on AM560, The Answer. We are back with the Donnelly Auctions Hour. We've talked about so many great things today, sports, memorabilia, firearms, ammunition, all kinds of stuff coming up here at Donnelly Auctions. I'm Susan, and you are... Randy Donnelly. Hi, Randy. Yes, yes. And uh, we're looking for, you know, items for the January auction. Yeah, tell us about that, because that is kind of... You know, the the January auction is, uh, you know, kind of an overflow of our November yes, auction. We had so say. much merchandise in November that just didn't make the auction. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just had too too much merchandise. In November, as you know, was our annual fall classic. It was four days, and we the best of the best. We had some great stuff. So a lot of these items that we're going to hold in January, actually, here's the date, January 20th and 21st. It's going to feature what? Well, it's going to, first and foremost, it's going to feature cars. I mean, yes. we have some great cars come in. Uh, a beautiful restored 1931 Ford Model A. We've got a, uh, a restored uh, Model A Roadster and a, and a great 54 Chevy 3100 uh, a step side pickup. I mean, this stuff just keeps rolling in the door. And, you know, earlier, uh, Susan, we did mention Christmas gifts. Yes, you we know, did. Mm-hmm. And I need to let everybody know out there, I need to find a 69 Camaro for Susan what? for Christmas. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Are you kidding? Wouldn't uh, that be great? That's uh, about the only thing I, I can get for we her. We should talk to Greg gonna... at uh, Volo. Oh, yeah. Greg Graham. Volo Auto Museum, right. our, our good friend there. And if you haven't been there in a while, get out to Volo. That's right. They've got a Train Express holiday uh, activity going on there right now. Check their website. Yep. For the, it's great for the family. It sure is. But uh, but beyond cars, I've got all kinds of great merchandise. I've got, again, more coin-op. And so, if, again, if you've got coin-op uh, pinball machines or any of these Arcade things. Arcade equipment. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. We're putting uh, it in. Coin-operated musical instruments we're always looking for. And great lamps. Uh, this auction has, you know, some reverse painted lamps and, uh, you know, these type of things. And, and uh, steam engines and just all kinds of, you know, what great I saw stuff. That we didn't really have a lot of in the last one were all those popcorn machines. We got more popcorn machines coming up. We do. Those because are fantastic. We're still clearing out a popcorn museum. Uh, and, you know, you can't put too many in any one auction. Right. So we've got more popcorn machines for sale. But uh, I'm putting it all together right now as we speak. So I will have it online probably in the next several days. So keep an eye on our website at DonleyAuctions.com if you want to see what's coming up January 20th. Can they well, still consign to that auction? Th- they can because you know, again, uh, just uh, advertising is rolling in, and mm-hmm. and got time. Uh, yeah, great, great pieces of advertising. We just got this fabulous uh, metal uh, apothecary mortar and pestle. That's uh, you know, it's thirty two inches tall. It would sit up on top of it's a, a great uh, item. Uh, a drugstore years ago. So we're always looking for good advertising. Some of the other categories we have is Petroliana coming up in January. Tabacchiana, all the Annas. Um, we've got some barbershop stuff, general store, soda fountain, yeah. just a wide variety of things. I'm, I'm surprised. It's going to be a fun auction. Again, that's January 20th and 21st. And we're out of bars and back bars right now. We oh, sold we the more. last one we had, mm-hmm. so we're still looking for a saloon bar and back bar. That's right. If you want to consign with us, now's the time. Go to DonleyAuctions.com or send us an email at consign at DonleyAuctions.com. Better yet, give us a call at 815-923-7000. We would love for you guys to come out to our auctions. You come come out live. There's no admission. People think it costs money to come to our auctions. It does not. Free admission. So come on out. You can bid live. You can bid absentee bids. And you can even call us to place phone bids. So tune in next week, folks. I'm sure Randy's going to have some more stories and for That us. I will. That I will. <laughs> but for now, I'm Susan. And I'm Randy Donnelly. And, and we'll, we'll see you at the auction. auction. Thank you.
Thanks for listening to the Donnelly Auctions Hour on AM560, The Answer. Check out all the latest information on upcoming auctions and collectibles at DonnellyAuctions.com. And while you're there, you can contact someone about buying or selling your collectibles or estates. That's DonnellyAuctions.com. 